Thank you everyone for attending today's webinar on how to embrace the Internet of Things securely and safely. In today's webinar, we will look at some security-focused technologies and solutions which you already have in your environment today. You may want to consider evaluating to support a current or future IoT initiative. Things is here, and various sources estimate by 2020 that 30 to 50 billion IoT devices will be connected. Companies are already implementing IoT solutions and seeing a return on their investments. For that leverage IoT technologies to get on average a 27% revenue increase by 2018. Also, per the Business Insider, the global spend over $250 billion in five These numbers are staggering, which will mandate IT staffs to implement scalable security and management solutions for the various IoT technologies and devices. It will have a profound effect on how businesses operate and communicate with both consumers and partners. Healthcare, manufacturing, and the automotive industry are only a, a few verticals that we will see major changes in the quantity and type of devices that they will be required to support. Let's look briefly at the automotive industry. In 2016, 70 miles of data was collected from connected vehicles. There will be an estimated 279 million connected vehicles worldwide by 2021. A million of these will be passenger cars. The rest, commercial vehicles equipped with some flavor of IoT fleet management solution. Let's look at IoT. Operations technology, or OT, is the operations world. The IoT devices that run the business or devices in the factory are examples. The operations technology dealt with all kinds of assets. Very expensive, highly specialized, and carried high risk in terms of what they did and the responsibility assigned to them. All the data. Reliability was so critical each asset had their own proprietary systems, controllers, et cetera. All this data accumulated in these individual assets and it did not go anywhere and it all became very siloed. Today, this data being generated by all these devices and we want to do something with it. Companies want to generate new revenue or save money. And we need to connect them to the internet. And we want to do it in a way that aggregates all this data and uses it in a more productive way. Also, we need to connect these IoT devices securely. Is information technology, or IT. This connection and opportunity represents a lot of challenges for IT. Data breaches. Latency, bandwidth, and identifying issues before they happen with all that data. It's clear that in order for this to work, IT together. They have in order to control, manage, and most importantly, secure it all. IoT security is our focus today. So let's discuss the security needs of IoT customers. security needs are valid across all verticals and should be taken into consideration for any sized organization that has an IoT initiative with no service degradation. This is very critical and very, very important. Think about it. In a manufacturing environment, healthcare environment, or under other industry, IoT devices that connect together will need to provide service without interruption 
or degradation from security components. To be the inhibitor for an IoT solution, and the data needs to flow through freely without disruption. Secondly, if devices are provisioned, they may not have any inherent security built in, and the devices may be somewhat old legacy devices where security software components may not be able to be installed. Thirdly, this is a big one. We need to have visibility of what is on the network and its context. Visibility answers critical questions. What is the device? What is its location? And other relevant contextual data is critical to ensure security and apply access and control appropriately may be different depending on what industry you're in and may be very critical to the business applications that will leverage IoT solutions. PCI, HIPAA, and other regulations are critical to understand and ensure the proper security measures are designed and planned for with any IoT initiative. So, we need to protect OT from IT. As with these legacy OT systems are brought online to communicate to IT systems. This needs to be done in a secure manner. Many of the old legacy OT systems may have been around for 20 plus years. They also may have been air gapped to ensure security or regulatory compliance. The OT environments today, um, they may not be in Great example that's, uh, that are still running today may be running unsupported operating systems like Windows XP, Windows CE, and others. This is critical to understand since the OT operations may need to remain on specific platforms, and IT will need to protect them appropriately since attackers will typically gravitate to compromise systems that have the most vulnerability, vulnerabilities and are the least secure. Remote access is not into an environment from a branch or business partner. It is critical to have the visibility of these devices and profiling may be warranted to ensure proper authentication and probably more important, authorization is only provided to the resources and protocols that are required. A great example would be a new would be new equipment that may be implemented in, in a factory or industrial capacity or equipment in a healthcare environment like a CT scanner or other device. These devices may potentially be accessed remotely by a vendor for troubleshooting. For access to these systems, customers could even require posturing of vendor laptops to ensure proper patches and antivirus signatures are of the latest versions. I think we all know of one or two major security breaches over the past few years that were a result of a lack of security through some vendor or third party system. Cisco's model for IoT threat defense has four primary pillars that will provide us some great guiding principles. Each in depth. And we'll also mention other vendor products and solutions that may be similar in function and features. So, with visibility analysis, this pillar focuses on detecting anomalies, blocking threats, and actively determining compromised hosts. One key solution in this pillar that customers may want to focus on initially is network access control, or NAC. Examples of NAC solutions include Cisco's Identity Services Engine, Aruba's ClearPass, Bradford Networks, to name a few. The presentation is important, especially if you have legacy devices. That security software may not be able to be added to the device, and the only option may be is to segment those devices from the rest of the network. Solutions in this area include firewalls, which there are many vendors. There are also many ways to segment, including Cisco's TrustSec solution, in addition to traditional approaches with VLANs and overlay solutions like LISP and VXLAN. Segmentation is another great pillar to focus on since customers may leverage 
segmentation through a next generation firewall, which would also provide vis visibility. Many vendors' solutions for next generation firewalls include capabilities to provide this segmentation as well as, as critical visibility that's, that's required today. For securing third party access, whether that's through a firewall or a VPN client, or even protecting the internal network from vendors that may come on site, there are various solutions and products from a multitude of vendors. Unified client for many security components, not just remote access through a VPN tunnel. And consider to leverage outside vendors for services such as risk assessments, security, incident response, etc. Customers have options for services from manufacturer or partners such as SMP. Obviously, there are a multitude of services that SMP and vendors like Cisco and, and others can offer to assist customers with IoT and security initiatives. When we look at visibility and analysis, there are a couple of things that we need to go through. We need anomalies in the event of potential attackers that may be trying to access an IoT device, or maybe a device that is already compromised and the attacker is trying and gain access to somewhere else on the network. Identify and block those attacks and in the customer's preference, the solution may be capable of blocking automatically or it may be a manual process. Again, being able to identify compromised hosts is critical to make proper decisions automatically in lieu of potentially searching through thousands or millions of lines of logs Detecting potentially automatically blocking will help prevent user error when it comes to threat analysis and incident response. So is so true. Context is everything. Without it, security for IoT, or basically anything, would be next to impossible. You can't provide much security with just an IP address and having detailed contextual data about each device in your network is very critical. To apply security controls, various contextual data may be collected, including, but not limited to, the device type, in this example, an infusion pump, the location of the device, time of access, type of access, and if the device has any known threats or vulnerabilities. This type of visibility may be provided through solutions like next generation firewalls and network access control solutions. As stated previously, there are many vendors that offer solutions that provide this level of visibility. When we look at analysis and action on this slide, we see Cisco's IoT threat defense solution and how various components work with each other. Services engine providing the visibility and access control for the device in this example, an IP camera. System engine and StealthWatch share contextual information through PX Grid. There are 50 partners that share or consume contextual information with their identity services engine solution via PX Grid. Other network access control solutions may provide this type of contextual sharing through similar security protocols and APIs. Contextual information is shared, shared bi-directionally between Cisco's Identity Services Engine and StealthWatch to all network layers. StealthWatch on network switches and routers to provide active security monitoring, anomaly detection, and automated security response to incidents. Solutions from other vendors may leverage technologies like S-Flow in lieu of NetFlow to provide the, the, the level of visibility into various network layers. Security solutions for provide similar and different features from vendor to vendor with various levels of integration and automation. don't need to look inside our networks. We also need to look at visibility from outside, including the internet. Cisco's umbrella solution is a great product to provide 
this external, vis external visibility from the Internet. One of the key components of an umbrella is the feature of being port agnostic and its ability to stop file execution, malware, command and control callbacks, phishing attacks, and other threats from the Internet by blocking devices and users from the infected sites by merely leveraging DNS lookups. Other vendor solutions that may provide similar features and functionality would include traditional web filtering products. Differences between these products may include how well they update their threat databases and how quickly these new threats and new websites that are infected with malware and other malicious code are pushed out to the user community. Go Talus, their security research team, which analyzes some 1.5 million instances of malware every day and helps stop 7.2 million attacks annually. This threat intelligence from Talus is fed directly into Cisco's umbrella solution for continuous updates and threat protection. This includes Semantics Web Security, FireEye, and logarithm to just name a few. Education is one of the key steps for IoT threat defense. It's not just protecting inbound and outbound communications, it's also protecting devices from each other. For example, botnets and other command and control malware that may have infected one or more hosts, a segmentation solution is key to providing protection may be a great first step to potentially provide some level of segmentation. However, segmentation needs to be extensible and scalable throughout the entire network to provide the benefits of protecting IoT systems and solutions. The plans may not be scalable due to the potential vast numbers and quantity of IoT devices that customers may need to support in the near future. Like VXLAN, LISP, and potentially other solutions may provide segmentation for IoT systems. New segmentation solutions must address and provide ease of management, role-based and policy-driven segmentation, and must meet compliance and regulatory requirements. This is an alternative to segmentation with TrustSec. TrustSec is an extensible software-defined segmentation solution. Existing customers using Identity Services Engine would be able to get up and running quickly and start seeing value of role-based segmentation with TrustSec. Trust tags and leverages access switches and other methods to assign these tags as users and devices authenticate to the network. A TrustSec solution allows customers to provide consistent policy or reduce traditional IP-based access rules on firewalls and other security devices. Attributes such as location and device type may be utilized to assign IoT devices to proper groups for consistent policy and access control. For example, an IoT, IoT devices on a factory floor like an IP camera or temperature sensor would be automatically identified and tagged to its proper group and assign the necessary access control to its resources. In Cisco switches, routers, wireless, and security devices. It is open source in the Open Daylight SDN controller and is used by partners and other vendors. TrustSec is currently an IETF internet draft, so it soon may be a standards based protocol. Con segmentation detail via security group tags may be shared to other vendors from Cisco's PX grid via Identity Services Engine. Today, there are 100 key security vendors that integrate with Cisco's security products, including Checkpoint, F5, IBM, NetScout, Splunk, and to provide some next steps. may want to evaluate and assess their current infrastructure and existing security solutions to determine if features not being used today may be leveraged for an IoT initiative. 
To provide visibility and proper access policies, customers that currently do not have a network access control solution may want to evaluate a solution as a key next step. Other solutions that customers may want to evaluate to help protect IoT devices and systems include intrusion prevention and detection systems, antivirus, malware protection, et cetera. Cost-effective solution that may provide immediate value would be a web filtering product like Umbrella to gain visibility and block potential phishing, malware, and ransomware. Segmentation is key to prevent the spread of malware and potentially other malicious code from infected hosts. Segmentation may be easily implemented by leveraging next generation firewalls. Other approaches to segmentation include overlay solutions and security group tag tagging solution like Cisco's TrustSec. Traditional VLANs may not be scalable, but it may offer an interim solution. Finally, for IoT devices and systems that may need to be monitored or serviced by vendors. Both remote access and on-premise access to these devices needs to, to be taken into consideration. Um, customers may want to consider adopting IoT solutions to provide their, their business a potential competitive advantage. So in, in the quote, connected products won't just be aimed at home life. They'll also have a major impact on business. And just like any company that blissfully ignored the Internet at the turn of the century, the ones that dismissed the Internet of Things risk getting left behind. So the information presented in this webinar helps please contact SMP if we may be of any assistance with you on your IoT journey.